Uh, my name is Fritz Diddle. I'm an assistant director in the College of Law's Office of Advancement in External Affairs. Whether you're here in this Melanie Gray ceremonial courtroom this evening or tuning in via Zoom, on behalf of all of us here at the College of Law, welcome to the 2022 Syracuse Law Honors Award Ceremony. Um, I'm thrilled to open the ceremony this evening to honor some of the finest and most influential members of the College of Law community. Five alumni, including a former adjunct professor on our faculty and one beloved professor. Thank you to all of those who helped put together tonight's program and to our alumni family members near and far who work every day to improve the legal profession and who give back in so many ways and with such generosity to the alma mater, of their alma mater. Um, before we begin the program, I would like to acknowledge our alumni weekend title sponsors. Please join me in thanking Richard Alexander, class of 1982, and Kevin Toomey, class of 2012, partners at Arnold and Porter, whose classes are celebrating their respective 40th and 10th anniversaries tonight. Uh, thank you to Richard and Kevin for helping to make tonight's ceremony and party afterward possible. <laughs> Together we acknowledge with respect the Onondaga Nation, the firekeepers of the Haudenosaunee, the indigenous people on whose ancestral lands Syracuse University now stands. Now it is my pleasure to turn the program over to the president of the Syracuse University Law Alumni Association, Colleen Gibbons, class of 2017. Hi everyone, good evening. Um, it's really an absolute pleasure to join you for tonight's ceremony. I will begin by noting that yesterday I was presenting at a conference in Burlington, Vermont. Um, and I have to say that the fall scenery there was very beautiful. It was just about in season and some of my colleagues stayed there today, but, but this weekend, this evening, and these honorees are so important that there is absolutely nowhere else that I would rather be than here with you all tonight to honor them. I wanna say that I perceive my role as um, the Syracuse University Law Alumni Association president as one of support. My goal is to support our board, support our current and future alums, including you students in the audience, and support the law school with matters that relate to alumni. So board members of SULA, as our Law Alumni Association is effectively, affectionately called, Work on committees ranging from veterans outreach, connecting with student affinity groups and alumni, charitable giving, student law student engagement, and particularly relevant to this evening, Law Alumni Weekend and the Law Honors. In this vein, I'm very honored to support the Law Honors Awards, especially tonight's awardees, whose accomplishments are many and varied. To share more about our newest Law Honors medalists, I have the honor of, of introducing Dean Craig Boys, our law school's 12th Dean. As a 2L, I had the privilege of joining some of my fellow student leaders for a lunch with several Dean candidates. I remember thinking that Dean Boys would be a great fit for our school, and apparently he felt the same. Because at the start of my 3L year, Dean Boys joined us here in Syracuse, and he's made it his home for these past six years. Under his leadership, Dean Boyce has worked to provide unique opportunities for potential future alumni, including establishing the nation's first hybrid online JD program, partnering with three plus three agreements for three Atlanta-based Atlanta -based HBCU institutions, and expanding degree options for international attorneys. The Dean continues to explore avenues to provide innovative options for our students and ways to connect with our alumni. And for this, I'm extremely grateful. Dean Boys, the podium is yours. Thank you for that kind introduction, Colleen. Uh, none of the things that have happened over the last six years could have happened without a wonderful faculty, a wonderful staff, and of course the students for whom we are here. Um, and so it's been a real pleasure to be here for the last six years. Thank you to the entire SULA board um, for your hard work in developing tonight's program and as usual presenting us with a slate of awards recipients that truly represents the very best of our college. 
To all of you in the audience tonight, welcome, and uh, thank you to those of you who have been here throughout the day. I see faces that I've seen through throughout the many programs that we've had uh, today. You know, each year Syracuse Law produces graduates who not only succeed in their careers, but who make it their duty to serve their communities from the local to the global. Tonight, we celebrate the extraordinary achievements and contributions of six members of our College of Law family. Each of them is known for their unique contributions and their dedication and wide ranging service to vulnerable and underserved populations to our to our profession to justice and to other societal goals. All of them are ambassadors of the College of Law, they are champions of our mission. Many of you, if not all of you have heard me say time and time again our alumni generosity of time treasure and talent fuel our mission here at the College of Law. Our faculty help drive it forward, and their steadfast support of our students, along with their expert scholarship, distinguish the College of Law for all of its strengths. Before we meet tonight's honorees, I want to welcome previous year's honorees whose contributions have been celebrated and will endure as a part of our college's history. I also want to recognize and celebrate our oldest living alumnus, Bob Gang Jr., who is 104 years old 104 years young. He's a member of the class of 1942. Before launching his law practice, Bob served in the US Army as an infantry officer at Camp Bowie in Fort Hood, Texas. And Bob is going to be honored later this evening uh, by Syracuse University as a hometown hero at the Syracuse football game against UVA. And by the way, that's going on over there. Go Orange. It's now my pleasure to introduce Rich Levy of the College of Law class of 1977. He's a member of the Sula board and co-chair of the Syracuse Law Honors Committee. Rich is a partner at Prior Cashman in New York City where he specializes in bankruptcy law and litigation. Rich also teaches bankruptcy law in our online JD Interactive program. Rich, I thank you, the Law Honors Committee and the Reunion Committee and everyone on the Sula board for your hard work and dedication on tonight's program. Vetting candidates for the law honors is no easy task given the multitude of potential candidates. And I know that you and the board take this charge very seriously and with great pride. I'm grateful for your diligence and for your passion. We also thank you for your service as chair and as co-chair over the years of the committee from the inception of these awards in 2015. Please give Rich and the committee a warm round of applause. And the floor is yours. Thank you, Dean Boys. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Syracuse on the College of Law. Thank you for making this your SU Virginia pregame ceremony. And a welcome to everybody who's out there on Zoom. Tonight's ceremony has special meaning for me as I mark the 45th anniversary of my graduation from the College of Law, starting my legal career and bidding adieu to E.I. White Hall. Congratulations to everybody here who's marking their own reunion and career milestones. And as the Dean just told you, this is somewhat of a bittersweet ceremony for me as I complete my term at the end of this year on both the board and the honors committee. My duty tonight is to give you some background and insight about the Syracuse Law Honors and the process by which our honorees were selected. For the background part, I'll claim some credit for the creation of these awards. In 2014, with the opening of Deneen Hall, and shortly after I joined the SU, the Sula Board, I suggested the concept of a new annual College of Law Awards program modeled on a similar, highly successful alumni recognition ceremony held each fall by my undergraduate college, Williams. In early 2015, the Sula, Board, the Sula Board formally endorsed the idea, and with the approval of Dean Hannah Arterian, formed the Syracuse Law Honors Committee to implement the program, but with one important caveat. Instead of waiting to inaugurate the program at Law Alumni Weekend a year hence in 2016, the committee was tasked to roll out the awards borrowing a famous phrase in American jurisprudence, with all deliberate speed, so as to confer the first medals in the fall of 2015. And so we did, publicizing the awards program, seeking nominations, formalizing a deliberation process, 
and selecting the first cohort of five honorees and working finally with the Dean's Office to confer the medals on Law Alumni Weekend that year, barely seven months later. As of tonight, with this eighth Law Honor Ceremony, the rich roster of recipients will be 45 strong and counting. These awards are designed to showcase the breadth and accomplishment of the members of our law school community. Although the law family at Syracuse is, of course, law-centric, the Syracuse Law Honors celebrate, quote, distinguished achievements in any field of endeavor, close quote, by members of the Syracuse Law family, service to the College of Law, the legal profession, Syracuse University, or to the world at large. In that spirit, we have received nominations that cover a broad range of distinctions, from full lives and careers to more specific accomplishments in and out of the legal profession. The Law Honors Committee oversees the solicitation and review of nominations and supporting information and makes recommendations to the full SULA board on the selection of honorees. The board in turn presents a slate of proposed nominees to the Dean of the College of Law for final approval. Once the slate is approved, the committee assists the Dean's office and the law school staff in staging this ceremony. And yes, we've already started the process of finding next year's nominees. From the inception of these awards, the Sula Board appreciated how important the program would be for the College of Law and took great care to see that it would be carefully stewarded from year to year. We knew that the process of administering these honors would be daunting and time consuming, especially for the committee members, all of whom have significant professional and personal responsibilities in their non-SU lives. This year's deliberations were intense as seems to be the case every single year. At times, our job seemed close to splitting hairs among the nominees under consideration, given all of their distinctions. I wanna give a special shout out to my colleagues on the committee with whom I am privileged to serve and whose dedication, diligence, and collegial spirit are exemplary. Sula President Colleen Gibbons, class of 2017. Sula's immediate past President Mark O'Brien, class of 2014, also a charter member of this committee. Jesse Fitel, class of 2016, who served as co-chair during the past year. Nelson Atkin, class of 1974. Incoming committee co-chair Kathleen Turlin, class of 1995. Brian Polito, class of 2006. And Kiara Taktakishvili, law master's degree, class of 19, 2019. Again, we were ably supported by Assistant Dean Sovi Dejeuner and her team in the Office of Advancement and External Affairs. Melissa Cassidy, Fritz Diddle, Lisa Ledoux, and Rob Conrad, by our former Director of Alumni Relations, Kristen Dugalme, who we will miss, and by the amazing technical wizardry of Joel Whitney and Kyle Davis up in the booth. Of course, a very special thank you to Dean Boys, who fully embraced these awards from the moment he arrived here in 2016. Please thank me, join me in thanking all of those people. Every person watching this ceremony, live or remotely, and every member of our law school can take great pride in these medals and the medalists. But at a more basic level, each of us has a role in the Syracuse Law Award Honors Awards process by submitting nominations for this high distinction. Nominations may be submitted through the Syracuse Law Honors link on the College of Law website. And I urge each of you to exercise this very special franchise. Doing so enriches our law school, inspires our students, cements the connections among the members of our community and advances our profession. Finally, if you'll permit me a moment of personal privilege as I approach the end of my term on the board on this committee. I first came to the College of Law in what seems like a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. It was not my first choice. It ended up being my sole choice as the only law school that accepted me from among the 14 to which I had applied. Even in those days, a good college record didn't offset two rounds of lousy LSAT scores. Although it was then a trying time for the law school with almost annual change changeovers in the deanship over a period of years, it turned out to have been a very good fit for me. As Dean Boys emphasized in his State of the Law School address this morning, the heart of Syracuse law is and has been for decades great teaching. I got an excellent legal education from great teachers like Tom Maroney, 
like Norman Moore do. Sorry, Emil, I took trial practice with him. <laughs> it's been a source of pride for me over all these years to identify myself as an SU law grad, to remember what SU meant to me and to my career, and to give back to the generations that have followed my class. It's been a particular honor to serve on the SULA board and to lead the Law Honors Committee. We have a lot to be proud of at this law school. I, for one, have never been more proud to be an SU lawyer as we recognize the achievements of six members of our law school family who you will meet in just a few moments. They are remarkable individuals, contributors to society, and exemplars of the College of Law community. Their accomplishments surely have helped to better our world, and it's a great privilege to be in their midst. It's now my privilege to turn the podium over to Assistant Dean Sophie Dejeuner, who will introduce the medalists. Thank you all again for being here. Thank you, Rich. And thank you to the SULA board and the members of the Syracuse Law Honors Committee for your hard work in administering tonight's program. Before I introduce tonight's recipients, there are actually a few of our past honorees in the room tonight, and I count at least six. And so I'd like, I'd like to ask them, if you can, to please rise so that we can give you another round of applause. Judge Danks, Judge Scullin, Lee Michaels, <laughs> Professor Maroney, <laughs> Judge Sotheby, I think, Paula Johnson. Yeah. Kurt, Kurt Weber, yes. Thank you so much, thank you so much. So good evening again. My name is Sophie Dejeuner and I'm Assistant Dean of Advancement and External Affairs here at the College of Law. It is my great privilege to introduce this year's six recipients. Benita Miller, class of 1996. As a law student, Benita was also a young mother. After law school, Benita founded and led the Brooklyn Young Mothers Collective, a program designed to help pregnant and parenting adolescents. Later, at the Legal Aid Society, she represented children and young people in proceedings in Brooklyn Family Court. From there, she became Director of Scholarships at the NAACP Legal and Defense Educational Fund. Since then, she's been the founding executive director of the New York City Children's Cabinet in the office of the mayor, deputy commissioner of the Division of Family Permanency Services in the New York City Administration for Children's Services, C president and CEO of New Jersey's Children Aid and Family Services, and executive director of the Brooklyn Kindergarten Society. Benita, who has served on the SULA board and is now a member of the College of Law's Board of Advisors, is now the Executive Director of Powerful Families, Powerful Communities, a collaborative that aims to design a family and community-driven model to transform child welfare away from non-kin foster care. A force of nature, she is also Executive on Loan to the New Jersey Department of Children and Families where she oversees a five-year demonstration project to reimagine New Jersey's child welfare system. Lisa Peebles, class of 1992. After graduating from the College of Law in 92, Lisa Peebles was a public defender in Jefferson County until she launched her private practice. It was not long before she joined the Federal Public Defender's Office for the Northern District of New York when it was created in 1999. She became the first Assistant Federal Public Defender in 2005 and later Federal Public Defender for the Northern District, a position she has held since 2010. In 2014, the New York State Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers awarded Lisa the Thurgood Marshall Award for Outstanding Criminal Law Practitioner. In 2021, she co-authored Scrapped, Justice and a Teen Informant, the real story of Heidi Allen's kidnapping, which chronicles her relentless quest for justice for Gary Thibodeau, who was convicted in Oswego County for the 1994 kidnapping and murder of then 18-year-old Heidi Allen. Mr. Thibodeau died in person before he and Lisa were able to find justice for him. 
Lisa will speak about her book, The Case of Mr. Thibodeau and her dedication to truth-seeking justice at tomorrow morning's book event here in Deneen Hall. I hope you'll join us. Deborah Stanley, class of 1977. Shortly after graduation from the College of Law, Deborah, Chancellor Stanley, began to teach a business law class at SUNY Oswego, and the rest, as they say, is history. She ultimately became SUNY Oswego's provost, then vice president for administration, and in 1995, she was named interim president. Two years later, she became president. During her 25-year tenure at SUNY Oswego, Deborah led the development of new areas of study, including a women and gender studies ma major, programs in engineering, human development, biomedical and health informatics, cinema and screen studies, and an online MBA program. She also stewarded the successful accreditation of the School of Education and the School of Business, and the creation of the School of Communication, Media, and the Arts. Her, ambi her ambitious campus-wide renewal plan included nearly $1 billion in renovation and construction, with such hallmarks as the lead certified Shunneman Center for Science, Engineering and Innovation, a modernized arts building, a new townhouse residential complex, a centralized school of education, and the school downtown Syracuse presence. At the time of her departure, SUNY Oswego had admitted its most culturally diverse student body ever with nearly one third of the total undergraduate and graduate population self-identifying as culturally diverse. It is not a surprise, therefore, that earlier this year, Deborah was appointed interim chancellor of SUNY, the largest comprehensive system of higher education in the state of New York, actually in the United States. The Honorable Norman Mordew, class of 1971. After graduating from Syracuse University in 1965 with a BA in economics, Judge Mordu judged the US Army, joined the US Army and was commissioned as lieutenant. He served in Vietnam, for which he earned five medals as a platoon leader, the Bronze Star of Valor, the Combat Infantry Badge, the Air Medal, the Purple Heart, and the Distinguished Service Cross, second in significance only to the Congressional Medal of Honor. Justin, Justice Murdu retired from the Army as a captain in 1968, after which he attended the College of Law. He joined the DA's office as an intern in early 1970 and joined the office upon graduation. He spent the next 15 years there, the last six of them, as chief of the felony trial unit. He became an Onondaga County Court judge and then a New York State Supreme Court judge, serving on that bench for 13 years. Along the way, Judge Mordu was an adjunct professor of trial practice at the College of Law. And of course, he's judged countless competitions here. He was appointed to the United States District Court for the Northern District of New York in 1998 by then President Bill Clinton. Judge Mordu became chief judge in 2006, took senior status in 2013, keeping a full docket until 2018. Emil Rossi, class of 1972. At the College of Law, Emil Rossi found his professional calling as a moot court competitor and as a research assistant to the legendary Professor H.G. Travis Lewin, or Travis H.G. Lewin. After graduation and a stint in private practice in New York City, he served as assistant district attorney for Onondaga County and later as a special assistant attorney general in the Syracuse office of the Special Prosecutor for Health and Social Services. In 1983, he returned to private practice here in Syracuse, focusing on federal and state court litigation. Known as one of the highest profile criminal lawyers in central New York, in 2014, he received the Onondaga County Bar Association's Distinguished Lawyer Award. Emil became an adjunct professor at the College of Law in 1975, teaching courses in, in constitutional law, criminal law, professional responsibility, and of course, trial practice. He retired from that in 2016. He'd collaborated with his mentor, Professor Lewin, in coaching the law school's moot court teams and advancing its trial advocacy offerings for many years. 
He helped establish the College of Law's National Trial Competition Team Program in 1977, going on to coach two national championship teams, one runner-up team, and three national best advocates. In appreciation of Emil's work, Professor Lewin and College of Law alumni established the Emil M. Rossi 72 Scholarship. As my student and research assistant, Professor Lewin notes, it was immediately clear that Emil stood out from the pack in his vast maturity and wisdom. We later led the trial advocacy team together. He was an outstanding and remarkable teacher who helped lead countless SU teams to success in competition. Those students learned so much from him and today they are the stars. Professor Arlene Cantor. Arlene Cantor is a world-renowned expert and a proactive educator in the fields of international and comparative disability law and policy. Professor Cantor materially influenced the College of Law's offerings in these fields, most significantly launching a clinic and creating the Disability Law and Policy Program, the nation's most extensive program in the field. Later, she established the first ever joint degree program in law and disability studies with the University School of Education. In 2020, the ESSL Foundation honored this course of study with the Zero Project Prize for Innovative Practices, making Syracuse University the only US university to receive this prestigious award. Of her work at the College of Law, Professor Cantor has said, working with the students is, is my favorite part of my job. Not only am I realizing my professional goal of working for the rights of people with disabilities, but I get to bring my students with me every step of the way. It is not surprising then that she received Syracuse University's highest teaching award, the Laura J. and L. Douglas Meredith Professorship of Teaching Excellence, just one of her many professional and academic awards and recognitions. In addition to her teaching duties, from 2021 till 2026 and beyond, Professor Cantor worked with the drafting committee for the United Nations Convention on the Rights of People with Disabilities, and since then has worked with governments and disability organizations in more than a dozen countries on implementing the convention. Now, let's hear from our recipients. I'm Benita Miller. I am a member of the Board of Advisors for the College of Law. I graduated in 1996 and I'm currently the Executive Director of Powerful Families, Powerful Communities in New Jersey. So my fondest memories of law school, in mostly the informal gatherings with friends, um, being able to talk about the law, being part of the Black Law Students Association, um, the events that were on campus that brought people to campus to talk about their legal careers and how they use law to improve policy and practices across the country. Professor Bender was that professor who was a person. She showed up very smart, but very personable. She was a mother. I was a mother during law school, so I had that in common with her. So when I worked to create policies around access to education or for women who are incarcerated, for them to regularly see and have relationships with their children, that's meaningful work to me. And that is because of the work that I was able to do during law school and the ideas that I was able to explore as part of the Syracuse law community. So recently I set up a scholarship at Syracuse to help young parents as they navigate the law, their law school studies because of the amount of support I received there and the ability for me to use my degree to help others, I wanted to create more of me. So at some point, hopefully far off into the future, there will be many people who will benefit from the legacy that I was able to create at Syracuse. I am deeply honored. I'm so excited that during this season of my life that I have an opportunity to connect more deeply to an institution that really gave me so much. Um, I think about my own children. I was a single parent in law school and because of my legal education at Syracuse, I've been able to afford to give them 
a very good life. My name is Lisa Peebles and I'm the Federal Public Defender for the Northern District of New York. I've held this position since 2010, but I was, I've been with the office since 1999 when the office was created. Prior to that, um, there was no Federal Public Defender's Office in the Northern District of New York. I've been in this position for 23 years now, and, um, but I've found my passion uh, and I look forward uh, to getting up and going to work in the morning. I was reluctant to pick Syracuse because of the weather, but the minute I walked onto the campus, I thought it was beautiful and it was so welcoming. I felt almost immediately like I was at home. And I was interacting with some of the professors at the law school and they were so personable and welcoming that I thought, I wanna be part of this community. Some of the fondest memories I have of law school were simply the relationships that I developed and the people that I met. Those relationships that I was able to develop were so important to me uh, because of the camaraderie and the support. Professor Lewin had a profound impact on my desire to do litigation. He was so passionate and he was excellent at just teaching us how to get rid of the lawyer speak and talk like a human being when you're going to be speaking to jurors. And that really resonated with me. And I felt like he gave me a foundation and the tools that I needed in order to become a litigator. Also, the opportunity to work at the U.S. Attorney's Office as an extern really was something that I will always cherish because it really exposed me to federal criminal practice. I appreciate the externship program even to this day, which is why I like to have SU law students working with us. I've met some great people and one of my um, most dedicated, hardworking assistants was hired right out of law school from Syracuse. Um, he's my chief appellate lawyer, and I just think that the externship program at the College of Law is outstanding. I couldn't be more honored to receive this award. Uh, I was blown away when I was informed that I was going to be um, receiving such a prestigious award and recognition from the law school. I am incredibly grateful for the College of Law because I am who I am today because of the Syracuse College of Law uh, and everything that they provided me uh, throughout my education. And to be recognized alongside of the past and present recipients who have demonstrated such accomplishments in their careers and, and have given so much to the College of Law, uh, to be named with those folks is just, you know, really very humbling. You know, I went to law school a long time ago, and it was in the 70s. That environment was rich with changes in the law, especially for women. We were in a civil rights era since I had been early in high school. I was at Syracuse University, and going to law school seemed like such a wonderful endeavor. It was a real stretch for me to even think in those terms. I also knew that a new dean was coming into the Syracuse Law School, and it was a woman, Judith Younger. There may have been two women law deans in the whole country at the time, and I was so proud of that fact. So when I was accepted, I couldn't wait to be a part of the new class that was entering in 1974. I think a law degree is an organizing principle in life. It gives you a, a great insight. My training always provided a wonderful leaping off point. The Socratic method teaches you how to think, you know, ask questions, ask questions, ask questions. Get a full landscape before you make a determination. So as I moved into administration, it became just the foundation of everything I did. I think like a lawyer. I, of course, can apply the law when necessary, but I think it's part of who I am, and I believe that it's added a benefit to everything I've done.
Being in the area um, all of these years, I've had an opportunity to watch the Syracuse Law School take off, to train students in a really different way so that they get out in the field. It's much more the moot court is today. As a matter of fact, I have a grandson who graduated from Syracuse Law School two years ago in 2020. And part of his curriculum at Syracuse was to take an internship experience in Washington, D.C. for a full semester. I'm very proud and very humbled and very grateful to receive this award from the Syracuse Law School. It was something, of course, I would never have imagined would take place, but I honor the school so much because I believe it has just a wonderful place in the whole university, and I see the great things it's doing, and I, I just couldn't feel better about this experience. Thank you very much. My name is Norm Mordu, born and raised in Elmira, New York. Came to Syracuse on a football scholarship. Went in the service, got wounded, and came back. Went to law school at Syracuse. Worked as a prosecutor for 10 years. In my 10th year, I was now eligible to run for judge. And a judgeship opened up in county court. And I ran for it in a contested race and was elected. That was for a 10-year term. Three years later, I, I, I ran in 82. I served 83, 84, and in 85, I got cross-endorsed by all four parties for state Supreme Court judge. So I took that job, and I did that for 13 years. And then in 1998, Senator Al D'Amato chose me and recommended me to President Clinton to be appointed. And I was the fastest district judge that ever got through the th nomination in the Clinton administration. There is one professor who I, I just loved the piece. His name was Travis Loon, and he, would, he taught criminal law, criminal procedure, law and insanity. I took every, every course he taught. He would bring actual psychiatrists in, give you a, a, a moot problem, and you cross-examine a real psychiatrist. I think um, the main thing I learned was how to allocate your time. They want you to have your platoon to point A by such and such a time to get extracted and then be inserted in, into a, a, say, a hot, hot landing zone, LZ. How are you going to get up this mountain the quickest way? Because they're coming, say, to pick you up at one o'clock and uh, going into a, a firefight. You, you got to make quick decisions. You got to be able to grasp it quick, know what's important, know what's not. Those kind of decisions, it, it made me um, mature uh, really qu quickly. Uh, it's an incredible thing to be told your peers, your and associates, and the people that have known you over these years have picked you for this award. I, just, I had no idea it was coming. I, I couldn't have known it was coming, but it's a prestigious award. I'm so proud of it. I, I, I wish my mom and dad were still here to see, to see this, yeah. My name is Emil Rossi. I'm an attorney and I graduated in the class of 1972. I was very close with Professor Travis Lewin. Uh, you know, I was interested in criminal law and criminal procedure. And he also got me very, very much involved in working with the uh, trial team. And that became a very part, a very big part of my, uh, my existence as an attorney. I, I worked with that team for years. And he, he made all that happen. One or two years, I think we, we, we won nationals. And that was a big thrill. Back when we started, you know, there, there were like a little litig litigation area. And there were people that, that were interested in, in, in that and who got interested in, in the uh, trial teams. Now, everybody who wants to be a lawyer wants to know how to litigate if, if, if he or she has to. And so the, the, the trial teams uh, have become a very, very big part of the curriculum. And they should be. Uh, and they're fun. My 
First or second year out of law school, I worked down in New York, and there was a brilliant, brilliant lawyer there. And he, if he had any doubts about it, he would tell you every day that he was a brilliant, brilliant lawyer. He, he was just that kind of guy. But he used to say, there are two kinds of lawyer, lawyers in the world, those who can write and those who can't. And I, I think he was right. And we were rewarded for writing well and reading well while we were at Syracuse. It wasn't so much how much we knew technically about the law, but how well we could express uh, a, a point of view uh, that related to a, a, a set of facts. The award means the world. It means the things that Nancy and I did together <coughs> to, get, uh, to get me into this place, to get me through this place, and then to uh, get me through the practice. Uh, turned out well, and I'm grateful. Well, I'm grateful for the, uh, for the, for the fact that the, the law school has really been terrific to me. They really have. I, I met wonderful friends here, both as uh, students and uh, faculty, and uh, those friendships have lasted forever. Hi, um, my name is Arlene Cantor. I'm a professor here at Syracuse University College of Law and have been for the past 35 years. I direct and founded our Disability Law and Policy Program and lots of other things that have been wonderful part of my experience here. To me, disability law is not just a field of law. It's my life's work. And through this program, I've been able to teach and excite other students about the field who have gone on now throughout the United States and throughout the world to make a difference in the lives of people with disabilities. I've had the opportunity through my own research to visit students in Kenya, in Argentina, in Palestine, in South Africa, in other countries where they are actually making a difference by writing laws, policies, and bringing cases on behalf of people with disabilities. Our disability law policy program was the first in the country. And since then, there have been law schools that have introduced courses in the field of disability law. That's a huge change in this country. Um, certainly when I was in law school, there was no such thing as disability law and no courses in the area. So the disability law policy program, to me, I think, has had an influence not only within the university, not only at other law schools, but really throughout the country as we think of disability now as a legal right, not at some charitable issue, but that people with disabilities are entitled to be treated as human beings and the law is what guarantees that. We opened the doors of Syracuse University College of Law to students with all kinds of abilities. Those doors are closed to students even today, but not here. And we recruit students with disabilities, we value students with disabilities, and if I were to summarize my fondest memories here at Syracuse, it's the time with students. When I had them at my home, when we could take away our roles as professor and students and get to know each other. What I've learned from students most of all, I think, is humility. As law professors, we spend our evenings preparing for class, coming up with hypotheticals. And I know the answers to my hypotheticals, but inevitably, whenever I think I've mastered something, I've written a book about it, or articles, or argued a case in court, the students' questions are the ones that always will stump me. This award means more than I can really describe to you right now. For 35 years, I've here, been here at Syracuse Law School, and I feel that I've given my um, really heart and soul to my students. And the fact that the alumni, the students of this law school, have decided to recognize me for my service to them and to this institution means more than it can really describe to you today. So I want to say thank you because it really is truly very meaningful to me and I will always remember it. So I've, I've, um, I've watched this video more than once, as you can imagine. And uh, once again, I'm struck not only by the love of our alumni for their college and their professors and their community, but your pride and your humility.
It's, it's really been an honor for me to work here for the last six years, so thanks for having me. Um, I, I, I would like to say that um, Professor Lewin couldn't be here tonight, but he knows we're here, and he is expecting that video. And so uh, please know that, that he will receive it. So um, let us keep all of your words close to our hearts. So here we go. As I call your name, please come forward to receive your medal. And then please uh, see, be seated to, to my right. Benita Miller, class of 96. In recognition of your distinguished advocacy and visionary leadership in improving access to social welfare for children and families, Syracuse University College of Law is proud to honor you with the Syracuse Law Honors Medal. Lisa Peebles, class of 1992. In recognition of your career long commitment to justice and defending the rights of the indigent, Syracuse University College of Law is proud to honor you with the Syracuse Law Honors Medal. Thank you, Lisa. Deborah Stanley, class of 1977. In recognition of your distinguished service to the State University of New York and your sustained commitment to advancing others, especially women, Syracuse University College of Law is proud to honor you with the Syracuse Law Honors Medal. The Honorable Senior United States District Court Judge Norman Madu. Class of 1971. In recognition of your distinguished lifelong service to your state, country, law school, and community, Syracuse University College of Law is proud to honor you with the Syracuse Law Honors Medal. Emil Rossi, class of 1972. In recognition <laughs> of your distinguished career as a trial advocate, your tireless efforts to teach and train College of Law students in the art of trial advocacy, and your profound commitment to your community, Syracuse University College of Law is proud to honor you with the Syracuse Law Honors Medal. <laughs> Professor Arlene Cantor. For your distinguished service to the College of Law and the legal profession as a leader in the fields of international and comparative disability law and policy, Syracuse University College of Law is proud to honor you with the Syracuse Law Honors Medal. Congratulations, honorees. Congratulations again. Before we conclude our program and head to the atrium for tonight's reunion party, I want to take a moment uh, to extend some special thanks. First to our extraordinary faculty, for where would our law school be without the expert and dedicated teachers who transform our students into the kind of alumni that we celebrate tonight. And working behind the scenes on the machinery that makes this great law school tick are our dedicated and hardworking staff. I'm so pleased to see students joining us as well this evening, and I know that our alumni appreciate seeing all of you here as well. The evening would not be complete without my personal thanks to SULA President Colleen Gibbons and all the members of the SULA board. 
for their dedication and service. Will all the Sula board members who are here tonight stand, please? And finally, let us once again recognize the 2022 Syracuse Law Honorees and indeed all law, all, all law honorees from the past years who are with us this evening. Now let's go party up in the atrium and enjoy the band, which features our alumni, Joseph Frateschi, class of 2014, Chris Spinelli, class of 2022, Joe Green, and Joe Vanable. Enjoy yourself. Thank you. 